This is kind of an unexpected project. After playing around with a very small buck converter a bit, I realized that an adjustable load is going to be a necessity for moving up in power. My first thought was to try one of these $50 electronic loads that I see all over the place. I think in constant current mode, I should be able to parallel them. But looking at them closer, I have my doubts about the heatsink doing a good job at 150 watts. So I figured, how hard would it be to make one? And what would be a good transistor to use? I did look a little at some IGBTs, but there seems to be very little info on them being used in the linear operating region. Some of the data sheets do list a DC area on the safe operating area graph, but as I have never used them before, I decided to go with MOSFETs. So I'm wanting a load that can handle 40 volts and up to 60 amps, and I think 600 watts will do what I need. But at 600 watts, a single transistor is not going to cut it, so that is going to add to the complications. In hunting for a MOSFET, I was looking for one with a large DC area on the SOA graph and a low junction to case temperature resistance. I found these Linear 2 series from IXYS that look nice. They are a little on the pricey side, but they do have a large DC SOA area. And the data sheet actually says designed for linear operations and the magic words programmable loads. That's worth a couple of dollars right there. Here are the safe operating area graphs for the 240 amp ones. Now they are about $32 each. I do think with the proper heatsink, these would be good for 300 watts. But I didn't order any of these. I decided to order a few of the 80 amp ones to test with. They are less than $9 each, so I won't feel so bad if I burn some up. The SOA graphs for the 80 amp version is still quite good for the price. And if I can get 150 watts out of these, then for sure I can get 300 watts out of the big ones. Of course, getting a stable constant current module working with the smaller MOSFET will not translate to the larger MOSFET. The gate capacitance of the 240 amp transistor is like five times larger than the 80 amp one. So I might end up just using the smaller transistors if I don't have to use so much drive circuit for each MOSFET. So I need to make a test PC board up. I made the decision to go with lower value, cheaper current sense resistors, and a higher precision, higher cost op amp. For the current sense resistors, I'm paralleling 10 50 milliohm 0.5% 1 watt 1206 SMD resistors. So even at 20 amps, that will only be 2 watts of heat to get rid of from the PC board. I suspect the leads from the transistor will add more heat than the current sense resistors. The op amp here is an OPA 189, zero drift, very low offset amp. This I'm hoping will be close enough not to have to do any offset adjustments. I'm not sure how well it will drive the gate capacitance, but that's the reason for the test board. These resistors are just to give me some input space. This one will probably have to be a capacitor, because for the testing I will be driving this with long wires from a breadboard. Now I don't have any of the temperature sensor ICs, but I put this on the board so I can test and see how well they work. Next time I order parts I'll get some. So that will be in the to-do list. I'm using the TO247 package for the MOSFET. Here, the bottom of the PC board has space for the drain and source leads to be bent over for a good wide sorter connection, and a wide area to sorter the main power leads to. The gold area here will be the exposed copper to sorter to. I don't have quite 20 vias for the current sense resistors, but it should be fine for a test board. I would want more or larger ones for a board I was going to run at 20 amps for the long term. So I'm going to run the DRC check just to make sure. Then plot the PC board files and drill file. Zip up the files and send them off to Osh Park. Then in a couple weeks, I'll get back to this.
12 days from order to in my mailbox for around $10. That I do think is one great deal. The SMD resistors I will be changing a lot. I will mount on their side just to make them easier to change. Just need to leave enough length on the leads of the MOSFET so I can bend it away from the PC board to clear the mount to the heatsink. The power leads will get soldered on. I'm just using some 14 gauge wire right now. The heatsink I'm using is out of an old Mac Pro, so I'm not sure how much heat it can remove, but it is a pretty hefty heatsink with four heat pipes. I just had to make a bracket to clamp the MOSFET to the heat spreader. After a bit of low current testing, I upped the gain of the op amp from about 30 to a little under 150. The gain increase seemed to help at very low load voltage. I put in a 220 picofarad compensation capacitor and put a 0.22 microfarad cap to filter the noise on the input. So this will be my starting point for power testing. First test was to see at what wattage would reach steady state temperature with no air flowing through the heatsink. And that turned out to be about 45 watts, a little lower than what I was expecting. Next was the test with a fan on the heatsink. The fan is out of the same old Mac Pro that the heatsink came from, so it moves a lot of air but is quite noisy. It easily handled 100 watts from the bench power supply, so I had to move to something bigger. At 180 watts, it reached steady state temperature. If I use the data sheets 0.56 degrees centigrade a watt junction to heatsink resistance, at this power level and temperature, the junction should be very close to the 150 degrees centigrade limit. I did push it to 220 watts for a bit, but the temperature rose quite fast, and when the surface right above the MOSFET reached 50 degrees centigrade, I shut it down. I'm quite sure the junction temperature was well over the limit. I've got a lot more testing to do. Running two of these together will be the next thing, and I've got to do some more heatsink testing, but that's for next time. Thank you for watching.